Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special CUBE conversation. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE here in our Palo Alto studios. We've got a great conversation with Broadcom VMware, Pranina Padmanawan, General Manager, Tanzu Division, and James Water, Senior Director of R&D for the Tanzu Division at Broadcom. Pranima, great to see you again. And James, thanks for coming in the CUBE. Good to see you too. Great Good to, see you, to see you too. Tell us about the evolution, because Tanzu, I mean, if you're inside the ropes, inside the industry, you know what Tanzu was and is. And a lot of folks are seeing it now because it's much broader, it's expanded. The evolution of Tanzu is a big story. What is the current explanation of Tanzu platform? Yeah. As now, it's not just Kubernetes, there's a lot more in there. Yeah, there's, it's a lot more, in fact. And so you are right, Tanzu was almost synonymous with Kubernetes in the past, but really what Tanzu has evolved to be is an application platform. It is an application platform that sits on top of any IaaS and allows customers to accelerate their application delivery. It makes it simple for them to develop, operate, and optimize applications at scale. And the nice thing with the Tanzu platform is it's paired with Tanzu data. No application mm -hmm. lives in an island, and that yeah. is the true portfolio. Now, this platform may run on Cloud Foundry, uh, VMs, uh, Kubernetes, on public cloud, private cloud, that is just a different vector. In May, you guys took a big step forward with the product, uh, and we're seeing a lot more focus on this platform because people want to accelerate. We're seeing a lot of acceleration in platforms to get to this yeah. Gen AI mission. Uh, take, what happened in May? Take us through what the, that step forward was. Well, the big thing that we did in May, uh, very exciting, and we've been getting good feedback as we launched our Tanzu platform. It is a uh, consistent uh, skew to the market that is unified so that it is not a bag of parts that people are assembling together to create that platform. But more importantly, it's also a consistent product release that we did. And that product release, what it does is it unifies the app platform function and makes it common, whether you're deploying to again public or private cloud, Cloud Foundry or Kubernetes. Mm. So that is what we did with Tanzu platform. And I must say, and maybe we will touch upon this, the contrary to popular f fear that is there in the market, we didn't raise prices. When we launched this queue, it, the prices stayed the same, and more importantly, we have added a lot more to the platform. So when you think about a comparison with any other alternative bag of parts type of model, you're probably one-tenth the cost. Yeah, and I think it's important to note that there's there's VMware on the Broadcom has the VCF, but Tanzu is its own thing and yes. solving a real big problem for customers. Yes. Uh, in June, you guys took another step forward with, I saw your blog post. Yes. You had this thing about golden operations, that notion. And this really is an area I want you to explain because we've been seeing the need for um, deploying across public and private clouds. And certainly with the generative AI, the yeah. private cloud game's coming back or never left. Yes. Or it's more expanding as yes. critical operations. What's this notion that you're talking about, this idea of golden yeah. operations? So let us talk about, first of all, rewind and say, why do you need an app platform? You need an app platform because you're abstracting the infrastructure complexity and making it very simple for developers. So when we were designing the app, app platform, we said there are a few tenets it must adhere to. Mm -hmm. And the first one is developer experience must be simple in order for it to be safe. If you make it complex, you are going to create errors, <laughs> right? The second tenet we said is developer intent should be automatically translated and infrastructure should be dynamically provisioned. Mm -hmm. If I want HA, if I want encryption, if I want you know, multi-tenancy, all of that should happen automatically. And finally, infra and apps must be continuously updated so that they truly stay secure and a developer doesn't have to worry, shall I push the code? Mm -hmm. Will I break something? Mm -hmm. So that all of that adds to not only more power for the developer, more speed, which is what is needed now mm -hmm. with these new generation yeah. applications with AI, but it also makes sure it keeps the corporate principles of security and governance together. And you know, you got the developers, they, they are under a lot of pressure, but at the end of the day, the operators, the platform operations, so DevOps, DevSecOps, that's basically the operation side, super important. What's the Tanzu story for ops? And so you got the DevOps, yeah. see security is implied, but you know. Yes, yes. You know, and so when you operation? think about these three tenets, when, when I was talking about the developer experience must be simple in order mm -hmm. to, save for, uh, to be safe, we said 
developers should not be worrying about YAML configurations. Mm -hmm. They should not be talking about infrastructure configurations. We, we have synthesized all of that into four simple operations that a developer can mm -hmm. do. Hey, I write yeah. my code, I should be able to issue a command to build it. Mm -hmm. Once I build it, I should be able to buy into any external services, databases, yeah. messaging services, third party services, AIML models, you know, uh, public cloud services. I should be able to deploy it to the destination of my choice, public or private, and private being a very big one now. Yeah. And I should be able to scale it. So that build, bind, deploy, scale become simple set of commands that developers can use. But underneath it, that is where the operators and the platform engineers come in. Yeah. With this Tanzu platform, they're able to wire those commands yeah. so that the single command can be interpreted irrespective of where the infrastructure yeah. is. And that is the power. James, I want to bring you in because obviously there's a lot of customers. I know you talk to customers all the time. I've been yeah. following the journey with Cloud Foundry from the day one. Yeah. You've been an advocate of customers. You've always been in front of all the best use cases. So you got that book. But before we go there, you know, there's an old expression, never fight fashion. Yeah. And, and it's almost as if we saw the cloud collision, we saw cloud 1.0, yeah. and it was lift and shift. If I'm on premise, okay, got cloud operations, okay. Yeah. Repatriation, not a different, different story, not really kind of happening. But now with the push of gen AI, yeah. The fashion is speed, execution, scale, right? Yeah. So the, the fashion wars and DevOps, yeah. which, which we've talked about on theCUBE many times, and I know you talk about too, yeah. was always like, feeling like it was all in the weeds, talking about like, does this work better? Exactly. To me, the fashion that we're seeing is, hey, I got to get a mandate. If I don't get my gen AI architecture and platform set up, yeah. I'm out of business because the competitive advantage on gen AI is going to be data, but the storage network compute got to work. Yeah. So, there's no more conversations around well, who's got a better this or that. Can That's it right. work? Can my Kubernetes scale? Does it auto provision? Does it all bind all the services? Yeah. Stand things up, bring things down. What's your take on this? Because this is like a, a hot topic. Yeah, I mean, you know, one thing I've observed, there's been, you know, kind of a sine wave of change of like how much customization there is in a cloud deployment versus higher abstractions. And I think the current market forces are really making execs ask two big questions. One is like, how do I deliver intelligent applications faster? And I'm talking weeks now, yeah. not years, because no one has time for that. And then two, how do I get more efficient, right? We, you know, we're seeing an age of efficiency and security. And I think these common operations have allowed us to introduce a standardized way that some of those DevOps, DevOps tasks get done and to reduce the cycle time uh, for developers to get code to production, but also just as importantly, to really make it a consistent, operable experience. So we've had organizations adopting that pattern go like two years without downtime. Now I'm not saying that always happens, mm -hmm. but that consistency really unleashes it to the point where the executives are looking and saying, hey, what's about, what about that platform makes it special? And so I think that's where this yeah. move back towards common platform engineering as opposed to letting every project hand configure itself is, is a big thing in the industry. And we're seeing you know, top-down pressure to go faster yeah. and to be more efficient. You know, Rob Stretchy on our CUBE research team with Dave Vellante and I, talk, we're talking about this pressure to get stood up and yes. get going. And it's not just about dogma or just mandate, take that hill and build, get the Gen AI. There's consequences that could be quantified. Exactly. And it's like, if you don't get it done, I can see sales, uh, market share, real business consequences that actually can be quantified, that moves the needle on decision making, doesn't it? Uh, absolutely, and that, by the way, I can t tell you even with my own exam example, right? We build software, and if we are spending too much time in the infrastructure and the setup, then we don't spend enough time on building the right software. And market conditions are changing so fast, right? We, I have a, uh, some, some interesting examples, like when you think about financial services, Right? How people trade, how people search for things has suddenly changed. So now, you, are, you can't be waiting. You have to put your application out. When you have to put your application out, do you focus on building the business logic, yeah. the AI, the models, the inferences, or do you spend most of your time thinking about how do I set up the infrastructure? Yeah. How do I set up the platform? How do I set up yeah. the DevOps? Yeah. And this is why customers are telling, fine, I had a chart whiteboard with 40 different bits of read <laughs> yeah. that I used to stitch together yeah. and spend time on, I don't have time to spend that. Yeah. Just give me a platform that works, and more importantly, yeah. help me, this is a very interesting one, and maybe something that you and I have talked about before, John, which is help me stitch AI ML into my existing apps. Yeah. I'm, I have a trading yeah. app. Now I want to actually add yeah. some Q&A to it. 
I'm not going to go and write a new app. These apps are often written yeah. in Spring and Java. So what we are doing with Spring AI is really bringing those models yeah. and being able to connect to that Python ecosystem seamlessly through the Java apps. AI, AI is generally has a tailwind for you guys, no doubt. But great to have you on theCUBE because you've been there, done that. You've seen that been in the trenches. James, you, you, you as well talking to customers, there is retrofitting existing applications that's clear and that that's low hanging fruit, but yeah. there's net new applications coming. Yeah. Yes. So the pace of play in this market is so fast that people don't want to hear blockers like, well, we're deciding whether we're going to go with X, Y, or Z. Exactly. James, can you share some customer examples that, that showcase this? Because if there's an excuse why we're not moving fast enough, the yeah. pace of play, if you're going to be left behind, I mean, this is what this is. A, these are real conversations now, not just BS anymore. These are real customer yeah. um, uh, sentiment. Yeah, I think one thing I would highlight in your comment is that like executives have really gone from saying, "I just need to make a generic cloud investment" to more of an intelligent app investment, and that's really changed the conversation because it might have been before like, "Oh, we got to get our, you know, our automation architecture right over the next 24 months." Might have been a project, mm -hmm. and now they're saying, "Hey, I want that app in." a month. <laughs> yeah. And so we've come in with our generative you know, AI services enabled on the platform. And a great trend for us is that people are building intelligent applications with Spring AI, mm -hmm. and they're using PG Vector and Postgres, which are two things already present on the platform. Yeah. We're adding those features so quickly to the platform to enable that use case. It's so much faster just to use our out of the box, ready to go app platform, than to say, okay, AI apps are this whole new group of people over here on the side that you know are just figuring out the machine learning part. So what we're seeing is organizations really want to democratize AI across their apps. They want to enable their existing developers and it's much faster to use a ready to use platform that's ready to go with Spring AI, Postgres, auto scaling and resiliency. Uh, than it is to say this is a skunk works thing for three years over on the side. That's yeah, the trend. Yeah, the evaluations. This this I think is the key to the tangent the way I see it. I yeah. want to get your reaction to this both of you if you don't mind. Tanzu has evolved into this I won't turn key platform, that's my word, but yeah. a platform that could get the job done. And then you get building on top of it. Is that, is that an oversimplification or is that the benefit? I, I guess every problem has a benefit, right? Or opportunity for the customer. What would that be? How would you I, describe I, I think that's spot on because the, uh, the biggest benefit of Tanzu platform is speed. If you took 10 days to build an app, now you can do it in 10 hours. If you took 10 months, now you can do it in, uh, in, in 10 days, right? That is the whole point. It's all about speed that Tanzu platform brings in because you're focusing on building yeah. the app, not building everything else. So James, give us the use case. What's the alternative of not having Tanzu? <laughs> Paint that picture for me, please. <laughs> <laughs> I think the alternative of not having Tanzu might be like, okay, so how do I wire application traffic into my you know, Python container that's sitting over here on some server that I've been experimenting with? How do I connect that to Postgres? Oh, I've never stood Postgres up before. I'm a machine learning person. How does Postgres really work? And then, oh, there's a security vulnerability. Well, I'm a machine learning person. How in the world do I update that? And what we've done, and I've seen it happen at customers, we come in and within a week, there's a live prototype of an intelligent application running, and then the executives just sponsor that from there. Uh, and I think that's really the question is, do you want to spend time studying all the components mm -hmm. or do you want to get going and iterating with the business and with the application? And, and they really have to, it's a bag of parts, right? Yeah. Yeah. They would have to, the visual would be, oh, I need now uh, multi-region support, yeah. great. Which load balancer do I choose? How do I route it? How do I connect it to my DevOps? Yeah. What are the APIs? Where does it break? Where do, how do I do log rotation? How do I do key rotation? <laughs> oh, yeah. How do yeah. I do repaving? Yeah. None of this you have to worry about what's with the platform. What's interesting that the so what moment is really comes down from a business perspective of why are my best people working on stuff that should have been done fixed already? Exactly. Okay, and then, exactly. then the technical conversation shifts to, okay, how is my compute networking and storage and software layers retrofitted enabling the Gen AI apps? Exactly. That seems to be the conversation. And the best people are moving on to the hot projects, which is re-architecting the Gen AI architecture, which has a lot of data and then infrastructure tie-in. Yes. Is that the way you guys see it too? And indeed, and in fact, that is why when we launched in May, we launched two parts of Tanzu. There is the Tanzu platform that gives you that entire turnkey infrastructure, if you mm -hmm. may, to quickly build up applications. Mm -hmm. but no applications, and especially in this current world with yeah. AI, live without data. <laughs> so the pairing with Tanzu platform mm -hmm. is Tanzu data. And Tanzu data is truly seeing a resurgence. 
-hmm. We've always seen, been very good at that space yeah. with our um, data warehousing solution with uh, Green Plum, now fully retro uh, fitted with uh, PG vector capabilities, Gemfire, which gives in-memory caching. And so I have customers yeah. who are doing very low latency credit card transactions. And when they do those transactions, they have to figure out if this is a fraud or not. Now, if I want to call an AI engine to figure that out, I need to do that dynamically while I'm doing that transaction. And Gemfire can do that for you. So you guys are the prerequisite for the Gen AI. Is that a fair statement that you'd be a prerequisite building block to move, to move the needle on Gen AI yeah, projects. Yeah, prerequisite building block that accelerates your Gen AI project, yeah. right? So that you and can. And that's what you're seeing with customers why they're, why they're working with you guys. We are seeing um, maybe multiple use cases, right, I would say. The, the most, uh, I guess, uh, use case that's getting the media attention is definitely the Gen AI use mm. case. But it's much more than Gen yeah. AI. Every, I, I, have, I still have tons of apps that need to be out there yeah. in production, working resiliently, and that I want to make changes yeah. on. I don't want to wait six month cycles mm -hmm. anymore. I'm doing daily changes <laughs> to the application. Yeah. And that is where we are seeing Tanzu. And the point that you made, which is, people are saying, I've got another company, uh, it's actually, uh, they had, a, this la it's a large, uh, again, financial institution where they had a Kubernetes group that was doing its own thing. Mm -hmm. They had some Cloud Foundry experts doing their own thing. And then finally they said, look, I don't care which platform it lands on. My developer has to have the common experience. Yeah. And they may get some additional yeah. capabilities one way or the other. Can you give me those golden commands across everything? Yeah. And that's what we have brought to the table. For the first time in the yeah. industry, not just Cloud Foundry always had that abstraction, yeah. but we are bringing that abstraction to Kubernetes. Yeah. And as people start doing these AI models on Kubernetes, as they are doing more work on Kubernetes with pre-curated containers, they get that same simplicity. I got to say, I'm really impressed with what you guys have done. I mean, we always, I've been saying it for a long time, because we've been covering KubeCon and yeah. CNCF since it started, the first one ever. We were there when it started. And it was all about Kubernetes, right? Yeah. And what happened was when Cloud Foundry was, it was all about the open platform of cloud, basically. And so Kubernetes has kind of had its Linux moment where it got boring, it just needs to run. Yeah. And so there's not, I mean, there's no real conference, there's no Linux conference. I mean, they have the Linux foundation, but it's so boring that they don't even have an event around Linux because it works. It just works. So Kubernetes is not about that, it's about what around it. I think you guys nailed that. Uh, and I like Tanzu because you get the spring tie-in, yeah. which is an install base of developers. So this seems to be the nice little synergy with Tanzu and spring in the customer base. So are the customers saying, hey, I'm going to take what I got and drive that forward with Gen AI and then add net new capabilities? And if so, can you give an example of that kind of scenario? Yeah, I think I think exactly what you know Pranima highlighted, which is we work with large organizations. A mm. lot of them are very much standardized on Spring. A lot of them are moving to Postgres as their yeah. standard database. And usually they're big enough that they might have Kubernetes and other app runtimes in their environment. And we have a very unique value prop where we say you don't have to choose between those two. And you can have a common way of enabling your developers, mm. a common way of satisfying security needs. And you know, there was one organization that had experimented with kind of a DIY platform. And they asked us like, hey, we can't even get logging turned on by default because every developer's configuring their app. So we have to go around and kind of remind them to turn logging on. And that was just an example of where these common golden you know, operations, like yeah. we turn on logging by default as we auto configure the app. Yeah. And so I think it was hundreds of millions of dollars they might have been saving by getting that automatic environment management yeah. from our platform across their whole app estate while looking at us for Gen AI. So yeah, it's yeah. kind of this one two punch of like consolidate the past and move to the future, invest in the future. Yeah, and I think, you know, the old axiom, you guys have been around the industry for a long time, it's like, you're never out of it until you're out of it, but sometimes the world spins in your direction, and I think with Gen AI, that's one. The other one that's interesting, we're having a lot of conversations on theCUBE about is, it's not just Gen AI, it's your, to your point, Bernita, it's about distributed computing architecture. Yes. You got on cloud on-premise edge, Yes. That's an operating environment that's just classic distributed computing paradigm. Yes. Okay, operating that as one thing with scale, you need automation, you need tens, you need to have a platform. Absolutely. And so how do you guys react to that? Are you seeing that in your conversations? And if that's where the puck is going, what does that look like? What's your, what's your opinion on that? I mean, I would say, let us do a simple test. Go and start looking at the large organizations and see how many have now a platform engineering function. The notion of a platform has truly now become mature. Mm -hmm. And that is because you need 
this function to be there so that the developers are not trying to figure out which cluster do I deploy to? How do I yeah. so, <laughs> stitch an HA? When do I do failover? They should not be thinking yeah. about that. So the platform engineering functions become very important. Yeah. And the interesting part is we are seeing a resurgence, as you have heard, in private cloud, mainly because that's where data gravity is. Yeah. So again, you need a platform. And by the way, in all the Gen AI architecture, they want the data on premise to secure it. From a security, privacy, yeah. uh, control. And so what is happening is that's where data gravity is. So now customers are saying, I want my platform there. Yeah. And I want a platform that truly runs because, but I, by the way, I might still have a few workloads that might be running on mm -hmm. public cloud, or I might have some services I want to pull mm -hmm. from public cloud, and I want to bind them magically. Yeah. So again, you need a platform that spans across all of this, mm -hmm. as well as abstracts, not just your compute network storage. That is the IaaS. It truly has to abstract things like the next level, mm -hmm. container runtime and orchestration, right? right? Yeah. That is no longer needs to be exposed to it's a more developer. complicated. I mean, distributed computing is not as easy as just running in the cloud or, <laughs> or just on-prem. To, to your point, John, you know, in some ways, Platform engineering is the necessary step that distributed computing needed because in the monolith area, you had like yes. a big monolithic yeah. Java server and one server. Yeah. Yes. So your platform was kind of your monolith. Yeah. And what happened was for the sake of speed, we went yeah. after these distributed architectures which are fantastically resilient, easier to update, scale, adaptable, but we lost the control and the automation and the security of kind of what the monolith did well, which was like constrain the problem. Yeah. So in some ways I see platform engineering as like this necessary next step in distributed computing you to make are, it enterprise You're ready. democratizing complex systems. Correct. Just like Nvidia and the big hyperscaler yes. chip companies are democratizing supercomputing. I, yes. You're seeing a massive wave where these other far reaching things yeah. are now coming into the table for the enterprises, which uh, you know, us nerds are like, hey, isn't that amazing? Yeah. High performance computing is now in everyone's hands? Yeah. On the PC, yeah. private AI. Yeah. So a lot of stuff's going on that's kind of in a nice sweet spot for you guys. So Yeah, and, and by the way, talking about private AI, which is part of the VCF um, yeah. infrastructure that we do, Tanzu just yeah. works beautifully with that yeah. how private AI to give that application layer. Um, and, and back to this democratizing, what we are doing is actually, and, and sometimes I feel we don't do justice to it enough, is of course there is the platform piece. But with the platform, what we have done is, the entire, um, your development framework is part of it. Mm -hmm. With Spring and all the acceleration you do yeah. with Java. All the work that you do to set up middleware, yeah. think yeah. about it. Yeah. Lot of middleware problem goes into middleware. API so, API gateways, mm -hmm. data flow, ETL. All that is included in the platform. Integration. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're talking about pretty large blocks of expenses and large complex products, all just seamlessly integrated. Yeah, and the benefit of the customer too, if I, and I want to get you guys' reaction to this and tell me if, this, if I got this right, is that you have a lot of data on the estate and so you can use AI to actually help in that area. Is that something that's on the radar and happening? There's a great example of that. You know, as I said, the CIOs are kind of consolidating and one of them said to me you know, a week ago, hey, you know, v VMware Tanzu, you're running all of my apps, so I trust you to tell me about what's going on in that, yeah. <laughs> right? It was like this very comfortable meeting because we had done a complete assessment of yeah. this whole portfolio of apps of what was running on the platform, and we're investing more and more in the platform to provide that yeah. app intelligence right back to their dashboards of how they run their business. And that's where you're talking about tying in and binding things together, right? This is the, the This is like an application metadata right in the yeah. observability of baked into the platform, and it's actually a pretty big feature because as they're consolidating, they yeah. trust our brand to say, yeah. I know you have my apps, tell me what I should do. Yeah, I mean, a lot of pressure we're seeing. Get the foundation, there's a lot of stuff still going on and evolving, um, so much action. I mean, you must feel good about your business right now, you're in a good spot uh, with Tanzu, you feel good about things? Oh, definitely, John, I think. Um, always you measure also based on customer yeah. reaction yeah. Yeah. and the customer feedback has been very positive. Yeah. I have heard uh, customers tell, oh wow, that truly is transformational because yeah. it simplifies my life. It doesn't add one more thing to my bucket, but rather it takes 20 things off my table yeah. and gives me one simple thing. I was in New York last week and I stumbled upon a big customer that you guys have not yet announced. So I know you got some good we customer wins, big numbers too, so congratulations. Thank you. Um, VMware um, Explore is coming up yes. and you guys got a lot going on put a plug in for what's happening in the group with customers and talk about what we can expect at Explore this year, VMware Explore. It's going to be a, a big event. 
So give us the, give, well, uh, put the, put the plug I'll, in. Well, maybe I'll hit a few highlights and maybe yeah. James, please add. Yeah. But um, uh, we are going to do, like last time, we are going to do our spring uh, event starting on what we call the day zero, yeah. Monday big spring event and uh, will be that is of course chock full of goodies yeah. i can't talk about all the announcements they'll be revealed there uh, then we are going to be talking about our uh, next set of um, power yeah. capabilities that we are bringing to uh, market on tanzu platform uh, we will be definitely talking a lot more to customers about our uh, simplified unified go to market with this common skew mm -hmm. that takes like 20 things off your table and gives you that one simple way to uh, bring the platform in, and then customers, customers, customers. We have yeah. tons of customer interviews, customer yeah. conversations, success stories, uh, both, actually both on AIML, of course, mm -hmm. but also on the vast set of applications that they have today. Yeah, cool. And your your thoughts on what's uh, coming? E exactly what uh, Pranima said. It's like really looking forward to going to the customer talks myself. I went through the <laughs> list of like 15 or so. I just want to hear their perspective on you know our R&D work. And I am pretty excited about the Spring AI demos. It's really cool to see like the Spring community like incorporate this fast moving yeah. set of technologies right into the, the basic infrastructure that they've been building for years. And uh, those are fun to watch. Well, big AI input, obviously the platform has been phenomenal for you guys and the Spring has got great install base there. So it's like, I mean, you know, you got a great market. And theCUBE will be there for three days. So uh, we'll be Looking seeing forward. you there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Thanks for and congratulations on the success of Tanzu and the platform. Good to see it deploying. Kubernetes is getting simple, runs everything. Automation, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank okay, you. this is a special CUBE conversation. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching.